This is Heart Rhythm TV. I'm Roderick Tung. We are discussing the featured article from May Heart Rhythm Journal, and it comes to us from Clermont Ferrand in France. Welcome to the lead author, Grégoire Massoulier, and the senior author and corresponding author, Romain Achalier. Welcome, Grégoire and Romain. Hello, Roderick. Thank you for the invitation. Hi, everybody. Thanks a lot. Well, we're so delighted to highlight this very important work because we recognize the beautiful intersection between electrophysiology and interventional cardiology. And there's no better teaching of conduction system defects than what happens after TAVR. And the reason why this is such an important question is we understand there's varying rates with heart block. But you, as a group of investigators, really wanted to understand the natural history of left bundle branch block which we often see after TAVR and we don't know what to do with. Here in Phoenix, we had a patient with left bundle, I remember, we did nothing, we said we watch. And then one week later in clinic came back with high grade block and it made us get really nervous, but we don't know exactly who. So tell us a little bit about why your group got interested in this question. And then tell us a little bit about the methods and how many centers were involved. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, that's clearly a daily clinical practice, and we have to understand how to manage the patient because they represent more than 30% of the patient after TAVI. And as you already said, sometimes we, do not, we did not know how to manage them. So we would like to have a great answer to give to our colleagues and to know how to manage that, especially in the fact that Nowadays, we want to perform a uh, small uh, length of stay after TAVI. So that's the reason why it's important for us to have a good question and to be sure that effectively we will not have uh, come back to hospital with complete AV block. That's the reason why we performed several years ago this uh, multi-center study because with the discussion with other uh, physician in France, um, we have all the same questions. That's the reason why we manage to perform these multi-center study with 10 French centers in everywhere in France. In the majority of the cases, it's university hospital, but also um, clinics. I will... Uh, let uh, Gregoire discuss about the methods. Yeah, we included 200 patients, uh, 17 were excluded due to protocol violation or excluding exclusion criteria. Finally, we included and analyzed 183 patients with a one year follow up. We performed an electrophysiological study and try to evaluate for each patient the uh, HV interval why patient had a left bundle branch block appearing after the TAVI procedure. The left bundle branch block had to stay more than 24 hours and the HV interval helped us to decide whether we implanted a um, um, pacemaker if the HV interval was above 70 milliseconds and if it was shorter, we implanted an implantable monitor, uh, remote monitoring loop uh, recorder. After one year of follow-up, we were able to describe the occurrence rate of high-grade conductive disorder in our population. Well, and does it matter when the recording is done of the HV interval? Because you do also show that, you know, four or five percent can get recovery, almost like there's elasticity or the trauma from it. Does it matter when you measure the HV interval? It's a, it's a very good question. And we evaluate the HV interval during the first three day post area, but uh, in fact, there were patients that had a left bed during the hospitalization, sometimes after six, seven days, and obviously there is a viability in some patient regarding maybe the, the valve type implanted and also the, maybe the inflammatory process or eventually 
the evolution of the conductive uh, tissue just below the valve that may modify in few few days after the TV the, um, the age of interval and also the fact that the left bundle bond may disappear after the procedure. That's why we saw that a left persisting left bundle bond block more than 24 hours was finally enough to undergo an electrophysiological study, even if clearly data are lacking about um, the risk of high gut conductive disorder in transient left bend and branch block uh, also. We, we, we had to, to define a population based on or empirical experience. Another very important point from uh, our team is the fact that, as you said, we want to evaluate the natural history of left bundle branch block after TAVI. And that's the reason why we have decided to use um, now called micropore pacemakers and um, biomonitors by biotronics because they use remote monitoring first. And secondly, we have a very precise evaluation and um, records of EGMs to be sure that that's true heavy block and not only based on our rate of RV pacing just as the previous studies. That's a very important point from for us because we are sure that we have true AV block. No, that's a very important point is the use of ILR. So there's so many strengths of the study, multi-center, prospective, systematic, and then with actual ILR data, which we know is the gold standard now in electrophysiology. So I think for our readers and viewers, I would love for you to take us through figure two, which really beautifully shows your main point and why we should all consider an EP study now after, after seeing a left bundle. The, the first point is that in our total population, we identify that 30% of the population displayed at 12 months and complete AV block. The important fact is that the, the rate of AV block is clearly more important in patients with HV interval greater than 70 milliseconds because more than 50% of the population with HV interval greater than 70 milliseconds displayed an AV block and uh, during the first 12 months. That's the first very important point. The second point is the fact that in the ELR group, 25% of the patients were implanted by a pacemaker during the follow-up, which is quite important. But thanks to the remote monitoring, we have a very low rate of symptoms of the patient. Only uh, four patients with symptoms with syncope or earth failure due to heavy block. So uh, we Thanks to the to the LBB study, LBB TAVI study, we have the natural history of left bundle branch block after TAVI, but we have also uh, a safe and effective management of such of such patients. Well, I think that this figure really shows those two different curves, and I'm going to send it to our interventional colleagues immediately after our interview. So we can consider implementing something like that here in Phoenix, Arizona. You know, the, the value of, of great new data is that it's generalizable and can be applied in clinical practice. And I think you've given our society a lot to think about. And I wanna congratulate you and your co-authors and this whole uh, multi-center effort because we need more studies like this um, in these really difficult situations that really determine whether we discharge or not. And can have and, and as we know, it, high grade AV block can be catastrophic too. So congratulations to you out there in France. Thank you very much for joining us on Heart Rhythm TV, and we look forward to seeing more great things from your group.